today. And first is the chief guest, um, who's not with us currently, but who's close by, Dr. Julius Mumuya, um, national PS of the National Treasury of Kenya. I also want to give special recognition um, to the chairperson of the African Association of Central Bankers, who's also um, the governor of Bank Central du Congo. I want to recognize um, my fellow African governors from Malawi, Namibia, South Sudan, and DRC. I want to recognize my fellow deputy governors from Namibia, Malawi, Tanzania, Mauritius, and Uganda. I want to recognize the people from the Monetary Policy Committee and the directors of the bank, of the central bank, and thank them very much for their support being with us today. Um, we want to recognize the support we've had from the Monetary Authority of Singapore, Mars, who are on this journey with us, and also senior central bank staff from Central Bank of Kenya and from other central banks. We want to recognize with us today the CEOs of domestic financial regulators, other regulators, P PSPs, and other institutions, and also the executive director of the Alliance for Financial Inclusion, and also the general manager from the Bank of International Settlements. So I think what we're saying today is that in coming out with this strategy, we've had a lot of support. In 2017, I was in South Africa um, at the Saab, the Reserve Bank of South Africa, and um, I picked up a copy of their payment strategy. And this really was the beginning of the story of how we're going to deliver a payment strategy for Kenya. And on the back of that, we recognized that the last payment strategy that we did for Kenya was in 2004 and was long overdue. We have to acknowledge the importance of the payment system in any economy. It's so important, you can kind of put it like the arteries of the economy, without which the economy cannot breathe and will stutter and fail. We can imagine if we weren't able to make payments today, what would happen to the Kenyan economy? And the acknowledgement of that is real. And so for Kenya, we have to be very careful as we look at the, Ken at the Ken at Kenyan payment strategy and how we look after it. Kenya has been very bold in the way it's done its payment strategy. And some of that will be explained um, by others who follow me um, to speak. The central bank wants to acknowledge those who have come before us in this digital space and who have framed, regulated, and supported us on this journey. A uh, special thanks to Dr. Jiguna, former governor of the Central Bank of Kenya, and also to Michael Joseph, former MD of Safaricom. Central Bank of Kenya is mandated under the law to oversight and regulate the payment system. And in fact, the words are, formulate and implement such policies as best promote the establishment, establishment regulation, supervision of efficient and effective payment clearing and settlement systems. So it's our job. And this system of payment is by policy managed by the director of banking at the Central Bank of Kenya. And so at this stage, I would like to introduce the current director of banking, and his name is Mr. Michael Egan. Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Um, I think f for me, first of all, is to um, thank all of you for uh, gracing this particular occasion. Um, I want to take this particular opportunity to thank our chief guests, our governors, um, and fellow central bankers that are joining us online, um, and also our partners who are in the room who've supported us along this particular journey. Um, in defining the next phase of payments in Kenya. Um, and this strategy that we are here to launch today 
uh, sets out the vision um, and the strategic objectives of the payments, um, the national payment system in the next four years. Um, as DG alluded to, I think payments um, are very, very important in facilitating economic activities um, and they support livelihoods. Hence, I think for Kenyans, the benefit they draw from a functioning uh, payment uh, ecosystem uh, is best measured in terms of how it impacts their livelihoods and supports business um, enterprises. So I'll take a few minutes uh, to just run you through the Kenyan payment journey and also uh, maybe share some highlights, high-level overview of the strategy that we are launching today. So I'll just move on to the slides, please. Next. I'll start off by kind of laying a global and domestic context of what has been happening in the payment space. Um, and please move on next. Next, please. I, I, I in the payments landscape, eh, there's been a lot of changes that have been happening. And a lot of these changes have been driven by various actors. Um, a lot of these actors, if you look at from a provider's perspective, we've seen a great shift from the traditional actors um, to non-bank actors. Um, and also we've seen the entry of big tech and fintechs in providing payments, where payments have increasingly become an activity, and hence anybody mm, is able to, to provide payments. But also we've seen the emergence of new technologies, and these technologies have been very, very critical um, in supporting the innovations around how payment solutions are delivered. Um, and from a consumer perspective, a lot of um, preferences, consumer preferences, have been very key uh, in, in driving the innovation around payments. Uh, consumers are increasingly demanding that payments be instant, uh, be affordable, uh, be interoperable and secure and a lot of innovations that are driven around payments is to be able to satisfy this consumer demand preference that, 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 that needs to meet um, those, 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 those requirements. But from a regulator perspective, regulators have also been very, very key in ensuring that where payments are being uh, rolled out, safety and resilience of payment systems becomes a paramount um, consideration. And all these things coming together have influenced the involvement of payments both globally and locally. Please, next. Just to, to share some numbers, um, and across the globe, what we've seen, especially uh, with, um, with COVID uh, coming on, uh, and COVID has been quite a disruptor in the payment space. Um, and the impact of COVID in the payment space has been, globally we've seen a 16% decrease uh, in global usage of cash. Um, we've seen a 41% increase in payments being real, uh, instant payments. Um, so that move to making payments uh, instant has been quite on the rise and real time. Next. Increasingly, we've also seen Next, please. We've also seen that um, from most of the consumers and small businesses that have been surveyed, most of them have made the point that they are likely to change uh, how they do or make payments. Um, and this is very, very critical, especially in this era of COVID. And more importantly, what we've also observed is that um, increasingly, there's been a shift from in-store uh, shopping to e-commerce and that has necessitated payments that are non-present in nature and, and, and um, the innovation of payment solutions that don't require anyone to be physically present. If I look at the Kenyan payment journey, next please. So the Kenyan payment journey is heavily uh, intertwined with our currency um, and this is, we still have significant um, number of transactions that are still performed in cash. As, as, as much as that is declining, cash still remains um, a means in which payments are made, 
Uh, however, there is increasingly um, movement towards uh, you know, digital payments. And the payments um, journey for Kenya started almost three decades ago. The modernizations of the payment journey in Kenya started almost three decades ago. And um, it started with the automation of cash withdrawals. If you may all remember, it started off with two ATMs, one along Moy Avenue and Kenyatta Avenue, to now over 2,500 ATMs spread across the country. There was also the desire to automate the clearing house um, with two main objectives. Um, the clearing house is where we settle and clear our checks um, and, and, and EFTs, and driven by two main desires. One was to inject efficiency in the whole process by reducing uh, the clearing cycle. Um, and that journey started in 1998 with the introduction of MICA. This was to automate the capture of uh, the, auto the, the automated capture of checks and just reduce the incidences of frauds that are related to processing of check all the way to the check truncation that happened uh, in 2011 that led to reduction of the clearing cycle from T, T, T plus 5 for what used to be known as Nairobi checks uh, to uh, T plus 1 and T plus 14 for then up country checks which no longer exist to a point at which nowadays it doesn't matter where you present your check, the cycle is just T plus 1. Um, in a, another, another key, key driver in terms of automation of the clearing check, the clearing house was uh, to be able to eliminate uh, or reduce the risks associated to failure to settle. Um, and this was because of the huge net debit positions uh, that were being transacted within the clearing house. Um, and two progressive actions were taken. One of those was elimination of government checks, uh, which was quite significant in terms of what was coming through the clearing house. Um, and the other one was the progressive movement um, to um, value capping, which kind of reduced the value uh, of checks that were being presented within the clearing house. To support the automation of government payments, I think the rollout of the large payment infrastructure, RTGS, was very, very instrumental in, in supporting the automation of government checks. So as government moved away from using checks as a means of payment, availing an online platform where they could actually initiate and make payments was very, very instrumental. Um, and with the rollout of the RTGS um, in 2005, not only helped in terms of um, removing the friction associated with government payments, but also the friction associated with interbank uh, payments and settlements. Um, um, just, no, just go back. I think I would also mention um, the regional payments um, and think uh, as part um, of promoting uh, regional trade and integration, I think the central bank, um, working in partnership with other members of the ESC, uh, collaborating has been very instrumental in ensuring that we have uh, we, we we promote payments integration within the region um, under the leadership of MAC uh, a lot of initiatives have been driven towards regularly um, harmonizing the regulatory framework that supports payments within the region uh, in addition to that investments into the payment infrastructure that supports cross-border payments within the region and those initiatives, um, and amongst many other initiatives that have been supported through the Governors Forum of MAC, um, which actually help uh, in making sure that as a block and from a Pan-African perspective, we continue to support payments. I think I would mention, and as part of what DG talked about, the mandate of payments um, was vested within Central Bank, and this was through the Central Bank Amendment Act of 2004, which gave the central bank the, moment, the mandate to formulate policies that best support um, the regulation supervision of an efficient and effective payment system. But that was further anchored with the rollout of the NPS Act in 2011 and the regulations in 2014, which laid a framework in which um, we license um, and oversee oversight uh, payment service providers who are either e-money issuers, uh, switches, or payment gateways. And just 
provide proper guidelines of conduct within uh, and compliance within the payment space. But I, I think it's, it's important for me to state that I think the Kenyan payments journey uh, will not be complete without the mention of mobile money. Um, so mobile money started in 2007 has integrated to all sectors of our economy uh, uh, and very, very instrumental uh, in driving the financial inclusion uh, journey for Kenya, which has grown threefold um, in the last uh, decade or so. Uh, which points to my next slide, just to be able to illustrate this point much better. So if you look at that, from a retail payments perspective, you realize that 99% of our transactions um, are actually mobile-related transactions in the retail payment space. That just talks to how ubiquitous mobile payments and mobile-related uh, transactions are. Um, and just the emphasis as to why, what kind of disruption that mobile uh, has created in our payment ecosystem. Next. I think just looking at some of the other key payment instruments that are transacted in the country, I think key to note is the issue of cards. And, uh, and it's very interesting to note that um, card acceptance still remains a challenge. Um, over the last 10 years or so, we've kind of seen very ne near negligible growth in the volume of transactions in cards. But also, we've observed a steady decline in the usage of checks. Um, and I think it begs the question, uh, it, what is the future of checks? And maybe that's something that we'll have to answer at a future date. In perspective, next please. Next please. I think in, in perspective, just to, to highlight the importance of dig digital payments in our economy, Looking at the average numbers in December, 176 billion um, worth of payments uh, was done uh, through non-cash payments. So increasingly, we are seeing a lot of more payments being going the digital way, and that's quite, quite significant. N next. I think the next slide alludes to um, what DG was saying. If payments are the arteries of the economy, then indeed, then government payments, or you say it's, it's the outer um, of, of, of the national payments um, of the economy. Um, in last year, we had 2.1 trillion worth of government payments that were done. And it's very important then for us to be able to ensure that Government, the processing of government payments is timely, reliable, and secure. And central bank having the mandate of being banker to government um, has, working with our partners in government, invested in providing online platforms. We have been working with them to be able to secure these platforms and make sure that they are world class. And that's the journey we are working towards in terms of ensuring and underscoring the importance of government payments. And I think that number illustrates how important that is. I think it will also be important for me to, to mention how important um, diaspora remittances are. I think we've seen a 20% growth in diaspora remittance. Last year, we closed the number at $3.7 billion. And increasingly, we've seen the transformation of the journey in, di in terms of diaspora payments, in terms of providing uh, and ensuring that most of these payments are instant um, and affordable. And international money remittance company, uh, transfer companies in partnership with local remittance companies have innovated in this particular space to ensure that payments are more instant at a click of a button within 30 seconds. Um, payments either terminate in mobile devices or in, in bank accounts, a significant departure from the past where you had to go and fill in forms and send, and send money. Next. I, I think it's uh, one of focus a bit on this particular slide. I think at the advent of COVID in 2020, uh, there was a lot of concerns in terms of how do we keep the economy going. 
and central bank in partnership uh, with the PSPs and banks um, implemented a couple of measures to be able to support the economy with regards to, to payments. And just as a result of that, we've seen an additional 3 million clients or customers coming into the digital payment space in terms of transacting. But also we've seen the growth in volume both in and out of uh, wallets, from wallet to bank and bank to wallet. That volume has grown by almost fivefold. A clear, a clear indication that indeed with, with support, with policy support, we can, we can change how payments are done. Focusing on some of the highlights of the strategy, um, please move on. Next. I, I think why, 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 uh, why a national payment strategy? Um, and I think in developing this particular strategy, from the understanding that indeed payments are very important in, in facilitating trade and commerce and hence economic development, we wanted to be able to, one, do things do, do three things when we came up with this particular strategy. And one of those was to build on to the progress and the foundation that has been made so far, um, knowing that we've made significant strides since we started this particular journey, but also ensure that going forward um, that we have a payment, payment system and, uh, that is fit for purpose, meaning that it uh, provides relevant solutions uh, that address customers and business needs and fit for the future, uh, taking into cognizant the ever fast evolving nature of payments. But also, ultimately, is for ensuring that this is about the customers and it's for the benefit of Kenyans who are the ultimate users of these payment systems. And this next. So this is anchored on a vision um, that says that the whole vision of this strategy is to provide a secure, fast, efficient and collaborative payments, um, payment system that supports the financial inclusion and innovations that benefit Kenyans. A lot of impactful adjectives that describe what we want to be able to do and all that um, captured in that particular vision. And if we actually do achieve whatever is captured there, ultimately the, benefit, the benefactors will be Kenyans. And this strategy is anchored on the five principles. Next, please. Is anchored on five principles. And these principles are trust, um, where we seek uh, to have a payment system that guarantees that when payments are made, um, they, they will be received in a timely and reliable fashion that seeks to ensure that, um, that all systems uh, have the necessary safeguards um, with regards to payments and with regards to channel, especially in an increasing uh, digitized, uh, digital world. But more importantly, um, usefulness, where we are actually solving for customers uh, and putting that in mind and making sure that customers' needs are addressed especially among those that are financially excluded in, an, in a cost-effective manner. Choice, availing choice both for customers eh, and for providers of payments, uh, payment solutions so that then it, it's able to start collaboration among various players. And last but not least, innovation, which is very, very critical in ensuring that we continue to compete in an ever-changing uh, global uh, stage. Near-term priorities. So as we move forward, these are some of the things that we intend to work with in collaboration with partners. Uh, build on an existing collaboration um, we have with stakeholders to progress towards full interoperability. Um, and that's for the benefit of Kenyans. Review um, our legal and regulatory framework and make sure that we align it to current and future trends. Uh, foster a much more customer-centric innovation environment. Um, continue our collaboration with our partners in the ESC and Pan-African uh, in terms of harmonizing um, 
the regulatory frameworks around payments and building the infrastructure to support uh, regional and inter-African trade, how we support, how we move towards uh, a 27, progress towards a 24-7 economy, and this is anchored by the current infrastructure that we have, world-class infrastructure that we have in place uh, at the central bank to be able to support 24-7 clearing. Um, continue to have discussions around how do we make the check processing much more efficient and lastly uh, explore the usefulness uh, based on uh, risks, applicability and practical use cases of digital money in Kenya. And how do we achieve this? I think we achieve, will achieve this definitely by prioritizing um, by prioritizing what the quick wins are, uh, working uh, and collaborating with stakeholders and partners, um, and, and definitely in a first approach and in a structured manner, we should be able to achieve what we intend to do. Thank you. I think that deserves a massive round of applause. It's a very exciting <laughs> it's a very exciting journey, I believe, uh, that you're embarking on as a country. Uh, as the Deputy Governor spoke here, uh, and also the Director of uh, Banking and Payment Services, they have described this from the perspective of policy and all that. But one of the things that we want to do is that this what we're doing today and uh, obviously into the period is not just about the policy, it's about the people. So I want to introduce three videos of people and how the payment system actually impacts them. So if you can cast your eyes on the screen, we shall play those videos now. Sai ni kona 15 years kwa hii samaki. Naenda kukuomba very early in the morning. For 30 nisha muka kwa nyumba. 5 nisha panda gari. Kitu kama saa 12 niko kikomba na chagua samaki. Cuz ni ile original. Ukichelewa huwezi pata. Sasa naenda asubuhi kabisa by 6, 6:30 shaisha. Nikisha chukua tunapima, alafu tunalipa na simu. We don't pay cash. Sai, hii biashara ya samaki ni mzuri na kutumia simu. Nimefraia sana simu. Juu, nikiuza na save. Ina nisaidia tu kusave. Saa hii tu nikiuza tu hivi naweka kwa nini? Kwa kwa savings. At the end of the day, ama at the end of the week kunapata umesave mingi sana kwa simu. 0710 75 Brand move ya. Eh. Asante. Ni na save pale nimekaa. Na save hata nikitembea. Na save hata nikilala. Nikiamuka hivi, natoa hivi, natoa sio pesa, natumia kikomba. Hata kama sijafika kikomba pesa yangu imefika hapo. Mi nikienda napata tu samaki yangu. Pesa inaenda mbele kuniliko just because of simu. School fees pia ni simu. Juu sahi account account ya shule kama mimi watoto wangu walikuwa nasoma ushago. Tunaweka kwa account direct. Atuendi na fee yangu imefika. Hata watoto wako wanafukuzwa na tunatulipa tu na school fees na simu. My name is Andrew Keo. I run a company called Blackjack Jeans. We make jeans. I started this business when I was still in college. When M-Pesa was a young baby, and it was the only one, 
In fact, a lot of people were skeptical. They didn't want to receive money or send money using m -Pesa. They would rather they give you cash. Right there, it was easy for me because I realized I can track how my money flows, who sent money, who did I send money to. But unfortunately, again, not so many people are accepting that mode of payment. Uh, fast forward to today, I almost do everything by, you know, uh, just technology. You know, we pay through uh, sending money over the phones, uh, transferring money, bank transfers, everything. Even the clients pay using uh, pay bills. Uh, yeah, we buy raw materials using pay bill. When it comes to importing stuff, it's really easy because you communicate over the phone and you pay over the phone, just do a transfer. This kind of payment has made business really easy because you cannot operate business from the most private room in your house. I don't have to walk into a bank to you know, do bank transfer, I just do it over the phone, so business is really easy. If you are running a business and uh, you have so much to do, you send money and receive money, sometimes it's really not easy to keep note you could even lose your notebook or something these days you know i have a receipt uh, once once it i've paid maybe using my phone i'll get a message and uh, probably the medium i used there's still a statement a monthly statement to show me how i use my my money how i receive money uh, and it doesn't matter whether i lose my phone when it comes to paying school fees uh, that is the only place I find myself actually walking into a bank because they need a physical receipt. You know, you send it to the bazaar. You can't just, even if you try to send them um, even a picture of it, they won't accept. They still want the receipt. Uh, I believe that is the only place whereby I have to walk in the bank. Mimi ni mkazi wa Kibiko, Kajiado County. Mwanzo nilikuwa nafanya kazi ya bidwork, kushona shanga na peleka Masai Market. Wakati korona ilipoanza, ikawa ngumu sasa kwenda Nairobi. Nikaka nikafikiria nikasema ni biashara gani nyingine yenye naweza kufanya kando na hiyo. Nikaangalia nikajaribu kuona kwa hii eneo yetu hakuna duka. Nikaanza kaduka kadogo customer wangu wengi wanalipa kupitia simu na inawarahisishia pia na wao kwa sababu kama mtu ako na pesa kwa simu hata lala nja katika boma yangu niko na mbuzi na pia hao ninawalisha ku, kwa kununua unga na si lazima nitoke nyumbani niende ninunue ninaweza lipa na kupitia simu na ninaleta hiyo chakula ya mifugo yangu hapa nyumbani wakati ninatumia simu kulipa inakuwa rahisi kuliko mimi kutoka hapa kwenda pale hapo kitambo ilikuwa ngumu kidogo kwa sababu huenda nitakuwa nimesafiri nimeenda mahali ambaye hakuna bank na itakuwa ngumu kwangu kusaidika wakati ninahitaji pesa kwa uharaka sasa ninaweza toa pesa pale popote bila shida kwa kulipa karo hapo kulipa na simu imetusaidia sana wakati mwingine tulikuwa tunaenda shule ikifunguliwa tunakuwa na laini kubwa ya kulipa school fees unaona mtoto amechelewa kwenda shule lakini kwa sasa imerahisishwa kwa maana unaweza toa pesa kwa simu na ulipe school fees ya watoto awaende vizuri shule As we As said, we say, it's about the people, it's about uh, Kenyans. And you can see the stories are very powerful, how life has changed. But any of us in this room, I don't think, need to be convinced because I think each of us can tell very similar stories uh, from how we live our lives and how we do our work. Uh, it now uh, gives me a great pleasure to introduce uh, Ms. Tamara Cook, who's the Chief Executive Officer of FSD Kenya, uh, to look at the issue of payments from a financial inclusion perspective. Tamara. Good 
morning. I'm pleased to be asked to speak about payments and financial inclusion, but frankly, these videos did it better than I ever could. Given FSD Kenya's journey over the last 15 plus years to support an inclusive financial sector, um, it's, it's great that I still do get to make a few remarks after that. In Michael's presentation, we heard about the vision, which is also right behind me, of this national payment system strategy. A secure, fast, efficient, and collaborative payment system that supports financial inclusion and innovations that benefit Kenyans. We have been honored to be invited by CBK to walk this journey of strategy development with them, many in this room, and it is so good to see you in person, and many joining us online have been a part of that journey. They've engaged in the stakeholder consultation, which helped come up with the first draft and supported and submitted formal comments as part of the process. There are a plethora of words that can be used to describe global best practice payment systems, and many of these rightly show up in this strategy. But efficient, secure, <clears throat> robust, fast, and even affordable don't add up to much unless everyone can access the payment system, use it, and importantly, benefit from it. As I was thinking about what to share this morning, I remembered a paper we published back in 2009 about some of the first MPESA users. I glanced through it again and was reminded just how far we've come. In 2009, there was a 15% gap between men and women using mobile money. Today, that gap has shrunk to less than 5%. The benefits of mobile and digital payments have been significant for women in many ways. From the resilient rural mother receiving support from her urban relatives, from the mama mboga or the mama samaki we saw this morning, saving time by buying things remotely from the market, to the chama member who can pay digitally if she's going to miss the meeting, to the newlywed able to pay for health insurance premium um, for prenatal and delivery of her first child, to the shosho receiving Inua Jami social security payments after the age of 70. That same report back in 2009 asked users how they thought mobile money could be improved. And as Michael said, it's important to satisfy the demands of users in a payment system. And it was interesting to read back what they thought then. Everything they asked for is possible already and being used increasingly. For example, half, more than half wanted to be able to save and earn interest on their money. According to FinAccess 2021, 34% of Kenyans are doing that through mobile money-enabled banking accounts. And now, with there are many solutions that are available to move money between mobile solutions and bank accounts. A quarter of users wanted to be able to use ATMs. Back in 2009, that wasn't possible. We know that's possible today. And almost as many wanted to be able to move money from their bank account to mobile money. Again, quite possible today and being used more and more. I think this desire expressed back in 2009 underscores the importance of a payment system that enables seamless connections between different payment mechanisms and connections to shared physical infrastructure for moving between cash and digital value. Those of you who were at the FinAccess 2021 launch in December may, may remember the story I told about my visit to Kajiado to see one of the surveys being administered, and it reminded me of the video we saw this morning. And the woman valued access to digital payments, but she noted that it was still a three-hour walk for her to make it to the nearest agent. And so even though we've come a long way, especially since 2009, there's still more that can be done to make sure that that shared access to cash in and cash out is available to everyone um, within a shorter walking distance than three hours. In our research, we hear a lot, and I'd like to share one additional story to the ones we've already heard from Catherine, who sells cereals in Nairobi. This research happened during COVID. She said, during this COVID period, when people refrained from phys physical contact, I decided to get a till number. It has been very helpful because it helps me set aside money for business and not spend it on other things. Almost all of my customers pay via till. Before I took the till number, I had instances where some customers would send me money and then reverse once I had left the business. Catherine is benefiting from an innovative payment system that has helped her increase her income. As we look to the future together, this national payment strategy can help include more Kenyans and un unlock more and more innovations that link people to opportunities in the digital economy, such as e-commerce and gig work, enable families to be more resilient in the face of climate change and impact like drought 
or that crazy rain we saw yesterday. Provide more flexible payment options for keeping kids from being sent home from school, like almost half in 2021. And I think it's interesting to see in these two stories. The first one, he said, the only time I go to the bank is, is when I have to pay school fees because I need that physical receipt. So how can the payment system enable him not to need that physical receipt? The, the woman from Caggiato, though, seemed to be able to do it just fine. That was quite interesting, I thought. And how can we dramatically reduce the cost of international remittances, especially cross-border in this region? So supporting financial inclusion and innovations that benefit Kenyans, the last part of this strategy right here, is not only part of the national payment system strategy, but it's also a part of the National Treasury's digital finance flagship policy under Kenya's third medium-term plan. And the digital economy blueprint, which was launched by the president in 2019, and strategy under the leadership of the Ministry of ICT. All three of these important initiatives from the government of Kenya are aligned under the same vision of seeing Kenyans progress for the benefit of her citizens. Just before we came in, several of us were talking about the importance of, of these types of initiatives and how they're all aligned under the same value for benefiting Kenya. As we turn our eyes toward the fourth medium-term plan, and I know the PS National Treasury will be speaking later, so I expect he'll mention that as well, building towards Vision 2030, FSD Kenya hopes to join players across the public and private sectors to make this vision a reality. All of you in this room and all of you joining online. As I close, allow me to quote CBK's recent discussion paper on central bank digital currency. The focus of innovation must be on functionality and the problem it solves for the people rather than the underlying technology. I think the same can be said for payments and financial inclusion. The focus of national payment systems must be on the functionality and the problems it solves for Kenyan women, men, youth, elderly, um, remote populations, people with disabilities, and the micro, small, and medium enterprises that are the backbone of Kenya's economy. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Again, a round of applause for Tamara Cook. Uh, there are two more stories that we want to tell, uh, similar to the ones that we just saw. So again, if you just cast your eyes on the screen of uh, a few more people telling the story of how payments has evolved in Kenya. My name is Samuel Mandela. I'm a graduate of Kibira. I'm a Soweto, Soweto Karibina Soweto Academy. I'm a member of Boda Boda. Because of Boda Boda, Sisi sema ni mbaya, kuna masai na kuwa mzuri, kuna masai na kuwa mbaya. Kama asubu hindi tuna, tuna piga gashugli, ikifika kitu kama saine, unana unapomzika, tena jioni kama saine yorashawa. Hiu wana na prefer pesa kwa simu kwa sababu, niki, niki piwa cash, niki kwa mfuko, nikienda kuitafuta na ikosa. Lakini ikiwa kwa simu, Kwa, kwa sana sana kwa mafuta, lazima ulipe na simu. Most of my client, mina bebeaga hapa karibu na junction, nisa idea kileshwa. Hawa wana prefaga simu, waneka kwa chili. Wapendi cash, juu most of the time watembe yangi na cash, so wanalipa na simu. Most of all mafundi, Kwa hii area, mji yetu hii, kibira, uwezi mpatia cash. Ukimpea cash, atenda kulewa kesho atakujia subuhi, asema ukumulipa. So unamulipa na simu, unabaki na message. Diwa subuhi, kesho wakikuja, unamambia ibu angalia kwa simu yako. Saa plan ni nisha kini. Na wakati moja, customer linsimamisha, kaniambia ni mpeleke. Ile wakati tunaelekea, akaniambia tukunde, aliniambia tupige makona mingi. Kumbe misi kujua jini ya yake. Wakati ulifika kona ingine, nikasikia meni, hameniwekea mkono hapa kwa shingo. Haka nituwa jaketi yangu, haka ngele kani kona pesa, lakini bati mzuri pesa yangu likuwa kwa simu. Haka chukua pamoja na simu, simu kazima laina haka tupa. 
nika replace line lakini uzuri pesa nilikuwa nimeka lock saving so ange wenda kufungua simu nikaweka line nyingine nikapata pesa zangu ziko hapo My name is uh, Caroline Gina. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I run a cleaning company called Miss Clean, where we specialize in professional cleaning services, both domestic and commercial. We've been in business for the last 13 years. As a business, we run a lot of transactions that are money related. When we started, I remember mostly the biggest mode of payment was checks, especially for corporates and individuals who could pay us via cash. Looking at the involvement of money handling and transactions has, has changed. And mostly even when COVID happened, I remember there was a big shift uh, from um, uh, cash handling to, you know, now more of uh, online uh, transactions. And most of my clients ask for our bank details and they currently do transfers, especially the corporates, they do just bank transfers. That walking and walking out of a bank was like something we had to keep doing. But these days we don't have such things. It's just at a touch of a button either on your phone, on your laptop, and things are just happening. So that has even helped us as business people, such that we don't have to wait for money. I remember I used to go to the bank to ask them to give me an uncleared effect so that I can do my next job, especially when business was really st still struggling with the uh, cash flow. But now instantly you have your client pays and instantly you have your money. We do internet banking from our main account to uh, mobile banking. When it's transferred to the mobile banking uh, system, then it's transferred now to every employee. That has created a lot of um, uh, efficiency because the person paying doesn't have to go to the site where our staff are working from. It just at a touch a button or while they're just seated in the office. They can easily pay people, pay them timely. By the time the work is ending, everyone has their money and they can access it and go home. A big part of our transaction, especially receiving payments, involve uh, a lot of um, uh, domestic, the domestic part uh, where clients, we serve them on a daily basis and they have to pay us on a daily basis, not until really at the end of the month, it's like the corporate clients. So most of them use mobile banking. We actually cancelled um, cash payments years ago. We no longer receive cash as a company. We only operate with our mobile banking. Internationally, we also procure mostly our machineries because it's easy, of course, and cheaper to get them there. Once we've settled with a supplier, we go to our bank and we give them the supplier's details. Sometimes the bank also helps us also get to know um, the credibility of the supplier and all such details. And then they help us do now the bank transfer, which is all again instant. And once it's done, we have uh, the transaction uh, evidence, which we send to our supplier, and our supplier is uh, able to just send the materials and machinery to us within our time. So yes, that has uh, helped us a lot. We don't have to go through so much changing money here, taking the money, or picking the money in cash, or carrying the money in cash, which uh, evidently would lead to enough times, you know, loss of, of, of cash. So the stories are varied uh, from uh, larger businesses to the smallest of SMEs. Uh, the payments revolution in this country has actually uh, meant that business has changed um, and business has changed for the better. The stories are interesting and we'll make sure we put all these videos up on our social media channels, uh, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Facebook and all the rest. And you can always take a look at the stories again uh, if you need to. Now, um, in this day and age, when you have uh, guests you have invited, especially some of our chief guests, some of them will join us here physically, and we are thankful to all of you that have joined us. But also some will come in uh, through virtual means or electronic uh, methods. And so I want to introduce the first of them. Uh, this is Dr. Alfred Hanig. He's Executive Director of the Alliance for Financial Inclusion. So again, if you just watch your screens, and we get the address from Dr. Hanig. Dr. Julius Muya, CBS, Principal Secretary, National Treasury and Planning. Dr. Patrick Nyoroga, Governor of the Central Bank of Kenya. Mrs. Sheila Mejive, the Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Kenya. Mr. Augustine Carstens, General Manager, Bank for International Settlements. Ms. Tamara Cook, Chief Executive Officer of FSD Kenya. Distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, please allow me 
to begin by saying that it is an honor for me to address this distinguished meeting. And I wish to thank the governor of the Central Bank of Kenya for inviting us to give remarks at this very important event, the launch of the Kenya's National Payment System Strategy 22 to 25. I would like to take this opportunity to commend the government of Kenya, the Central Bank of Kenya development and technical support partners, the civil society, the private sector, and all the other stakeholders who have participated in the formulation of the strategy. Now the implementation can start. And uh, the formulation of this strategy is further testament uh, for all of us you know, to the bold steps that have been taken over the years to increase access to financial services in Kenya. Now, the FinAccess survey 2021, supported by AFI, among others, indicated that access to formal financial services in Kenya has increased significantly from 26.7% in 26 to 83.7% in 2021. This is um, remarkable. Um, as already mentioned, financial inclusion is a critical enabler to the development of our economies and it has also the potential to shift uh, the lives and uplift the lives of our citizens. The COVID-19 pandemic has amplified the uptake of digital financial services particularly, which has necessitated a reduction in the use of cash as a means to curtail infections. Meanwhile, national and international efforts continue to promote universal access to and use of financial services to reduce poverty and improve opportunities and living standards for people that do not use such services. As a result of this interaction between an intensive agenda focused on promoting financial inclusion and the greater presence and participation of electronic payments and economic activity, the latter represent a highly potential instrument for fostering financial inclusion as individuals and firms interact in the economy via the payments they make to each other through different instruments and channels. A brief review of the Kenya National Payment System Strategy 2022 to 2025 indicates that it is a it is uh, motivated by a desire to meet the diverse needs of the Kenyan people and its economy and support the country's ambition for a digital, inclusive and 24-7 economy. The strategy will also be the basis for consolidating and extending Kenya's global leadership in digital payments and innovation. I'm very happy to note that the process of formulation, the strategy was done in a collaborative and consultative basis, drawing on participation from various stakeholders throughout the payments industry. This is critical as it provides ownership of the strategy by the various stakeholders and implies that each of these stakeholders has a role to play in its implementation. I also noticed that there was a global scan and best practice review. This is well aligned to AFI's peer learning and knowledge exchange pillar where members share knowledge and expertise on policy formulation with the aim of learning relevant lessons that can be adopted, taking into the consideration the local context. From the above, it can be seen that the strategy is a great tool to ensure that there's a defined way of enhancing the Kenyan payments ecosystem and that the progress is also measured. It also ensures that the efforts um, are comprehensive and include all relevant stakeholders. Member institutions in the Alliance for Financial Inclusion have documented various strategies, such as national financial inclusion strategies and AFI has come in to support their formulation and implementation. We are committed to supporting member institutions to achieve their financial inclusion goals. As Sun Chu, the famous Chinese strategist put it, strategy without tactic is the slowest route to victory and tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. Therefore, as another strategist put it, in life, as in football, you won't go far unless you know where the goal posts are. We are here 
to launch the tactics to further enhance the efforts of expanding the payments ecosystem in Kenya. We need to find those goalposts and score as many goals to reduce the 17% financial exclusion rate that was highlighted by the Fin Access Survey 2021. I would like to conclude by emphasizing that implementation uh, of this strategy requires a coherent and comprehensive approach. This is not a task that one institution can carry out alone. Financial service providers and policymakers in the government have a critical role to play as well. We look forward to our uh, partnerships with all of you, to your active participation and contribution during the implementation of the strategy. As AFI, we are committed to our members in Kenya in actively supporting the implementation of this strategy. Once again, I thank Dr. Nyoroge, the governor of the Central Bank of Kenya for his invitation for me to give remarks at the launch of this strategy and for his continued active participation in the AFI network. I thank you all. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hanik. Dr. Hanik, just a reminder, is Executive Director of the Alliance for Financial Inclusion. Now, you've uh, most likely heard of uh, the Central Bank of Central Banks. That is a bank for international settlements. And we shall now hear from Augustine Carstens, who is a General Manager of BIS. It is an honor to speak to you today. Thank you to Governor Patrick for the kind invitation and to the other speakers for their insightful remarks. In the last two decades, the Central Bank of Kenya has been a pioneer in the field of digital payments and its experience has served as an inspiration to authorities in other countries. It is no exaggeration to say that mobile money has changed the world since its introduction in Kenya in 2007. But perhaps just as importantly, wise public policies have harnessed private sector innovation to benefit Kenyans, households and firms. The fact that nearly 84% of adults are now included in the financial system is a testament to this. To achieve this progress, policy has had to continuously adapt. As in many countries, the introduction of innovative digital payment services initially led to closed-loop systems that were not interoperable with one another. Yet the Central Bank of Kenya, working together with the Competition Authority of Kenya and the Communication Authority, took action to ensure interoperability in 2018 a forward-thinking policy that has helped to ensure competition and consumer choice. These wise policies have paid dividends for financial inclusion and the economy, as we have, have heard. And the lessons are relevant to central banks in other countries who often face similar challenges. Today, it is great to see the Central Bank of Kenya take this further with its nas national payment strategy. With this step, Central Bank of Kenya is helping to further advance the policy frontier. As the strategy notes, the context of digital payments is changing. In Kenya, as in other countries, there is now a wide array of digital payment services available to consumers and businesses. Banks and non-banks offer accounts, payment cards, e-money, and an increasing array of mobile financial services. In parallel, cash use is declining in Kenya, in line with many economies around the world. But not all innovation benefits economies and their citizens. In many countries, we see interest by retail and institutional investors in cryptocurrencies, stablecoins, and decentralized finance, or DeFi. It is claimed that these innovations can foster new forms of exchange and financial inclusion. Yet in practice, this is a largely unregulated sector, which could be prone to theft, 
scams, and fraud. More fundamentally, private currencies could threaten monetary sovereignty and undermine trust in money. I agree with the strategy's call for regulatory vigilance. Indeed, internationally, standard-setting bodies are currently working on regulatory approaches to crypto assets. The strategy lays out a sound vision for the medium term. Kenya's experience in terms of mobile payments infrastructure and financial inclusion provides a strong foundation to leverage the opportunities presented by global developments. To adapt to the fast-changing financial landscape, more and more central banks are considering issuance of central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs. CBDCs could be an advanced representation of central bank money for the digital era. They could be designed to support financial inclusion. The Central Bank of Kenya's engagement in this area is greatly appreciated and we'll look forward to hearing the responses to the recently launched consultation. Another welcome element of the strategy is its alignment with regional payment integration initiatives. Through active collaboration with regional and continental counterparts, this work can help to facilitate trade, migrants' remittances, and economic integration across the region and Africa. Overall, I'm pleased to see that trust, innovation, and global cooperation are key pieces of the new strategy. These are areas that the BIS considers crucial as well. As the Central Bank of Kenya works to implement this vision, I know that other central banks stand ready to work together. Let me conclude. Kenya's experience is of great relevance to other countries. As you work to improve payments for Kenyans, you are also contributing to the understanding that can help central banks in countries around the world. In this light, I congratulate the Central Bank of Kenya on the strategy. We look forward to following your experience and continuing to engage with. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. That uh, was Augustine Carstens, uh, the General Manager of the Bank uh, of International Settlements. We are also joined this morning, although you cannot see them, but they can see us by quite a number of uh, our peer central banks. Uh, this is uh, central banks from around Africa and also some from outside of Africa. And we do know that among those uh, are governors and deputy governors of these central banks. We want to hear from one of them. This is Mrs. Malangu Kabedimbuyi, who is a governor of Banque Centrale du Congo and the chairperson of the Africa Association of Central Banks. So from the governor of uh, the Banque Centrale du Congo. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, it is with great pleasure and honor that I'm going to make a few remarks on this momentous day of the launch by the Central Bank of Kenya of its national payment strategy for 2022-25. I will be making these remarks as governor of the Central Bank of Congo Democratic Republic and as such as president of the Association of African Central Banks. I'm grateful to Honorable Patrick Njoroje, Governor of the Central Bank of Kenya, for inviting me to share the stage with you all and bear witness to this important achievement. As we know, economic and financial developments in the last several years have shown worldwide the critical importance of arrangements and infrastructures that would enable consumers and businesses to transfer funds using their accounts in financial institutions. Innovation in these areas have been rapid and constantly evolving. Our continent has been part of this evolution, although at a slower pace, except in few cases like in Kenya. In recent decades, several countries 
started modernizing the payment systems with the aim of acquiring modern and effective infrastructures with a view to expanding access to financial services and improving living standards for the population while supporting economic growth. Despite progress by many central banks and investments made to modernize payment infrastructures, cash transactions remain important for large portions of populations, partly because of the lack of comprehensive national strategies for the development of payment systems and particularly retail payment systems that would promote digital finance, the financial inclusion, and cybersecurity. This is still a big challenge for many countries. It is in this context that today's event takes a special meaning for Kenya and beyond its borders. Indeed, the goals set out by the Central Bank of Kenya in its national payment strategy are fully aligned with the economic and financial development goals set by the Association of African Central Banks. This includes the construction of an African payment ecosystem. With this national strategy, the Central Bank of Kenya is leading the way for many countries still in the process of completing national payment systems and still working on financial innovations, an area in which Kenya is a renowned leader. I would like to finish by thanking again Governor Joroje for his invitation and to congratulate him and his team for this great milestone and achievement. We look forward to shared lessons and peer learning opportunities between the Central Bank of Kenya and the Central Bank of Congo, but more generally within the Association of African Central Banks. Cheers and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was the governor of the Bank Central du Congo. And as we told you, this is something that is exciting, I think, for the entire continent. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce, well, I don't need to introduce him, but to welcome the governor of the Central Bank of Kenya, Dr. Patrick Jeroge. Very much, Wallace. <clears throat> Dr. Julius Muya, our chief guest and principal secretary of the National uh, Treasury. I recognize uh, a lot of the people in the room the banks, the, um, the PSPs fellow regulators. I want to recognize um, some of the people that spoke. Um, Agustin Castens from uh, the BIS, Alfred Hanin from uh, uh, the Alliance of Financial Inclusion. And in particular, I want to recognize the governor of, uh, thank you, the governor of the Central Bank of Congo DRC, who also, as she said, is the chairperson of the Association of African Central Banks. So in a sense, she is our boss at this moment. Um, and also, of course, I want to recognize in particular governors that uh, have dialed in, uh, following this online virtually. And uh, as the current chairperson or the chairman of uh, the regional, well, the East African Community MAC, which is the, um, the committee, the Monetary Authorities Committee of uh, our East African region, I want to recognize my fellow governors. Um, in particular, 
the governor of Tanzania, the Gov Bank of Tanzania, the governor of uh, Bank of Rwanda, Burundi, South Sudan, and also I want to recognize the deputy governor of uh, Bank of Uganda. Now the others, but uh, we also have the governor of Namibia in particular from far south and uh, the governor of uh, South or Sub South Africa. We have a lot of governors on the line, um, but I think I'll stop there in the interest of time. <laughs> um, colleagues, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to welcome you to the launch of the National Payment Strategy 2022-2025. At the outset, let me recognize um, all of you in the room, and indeed others that are outside that have joined us uh, uh, virtually. Let me also thank in particular the governor, uh, Kabedi Bunyi, in her dual capacity as governor of uh, the Bank of uh, Congo, and also, as I say, the chairperson of the African Association of Central Bankers. As chairperson of AACB, she brings on board our sister central banks across the African continent. And they are also struggling in the same space. We are most grateful, Governor, that you have graced us with your presence this morning. We also noticed you had very bright colors. We love that. Um, Finally, I would be remiss if I did not recognize our chief guest, as I said, Dr. Julius Muya, and thank him for joining us once again, just two months after the launch of the 2021 Fin, fin Access Household Survey. Now, while anthropologists will find reason to dispute Kenya's claim to being the cradle of humanity, its claim as the cradle of fintech is hard to challenge. From the starting point of a simple money transfer, <laughs> from the starting point of a simple money transfer innovation, an elaborate financial services ecosystem has emerged. More importantly, the payment systems have provided the rails for Kenya's financial inclusion journey. Over the last 15 years, access to financial services has tripled from 26% of adults in, 20, in 2006 to 83% in 2021. Some of the key milestones in this journey have included the rollout of mobile money, the implementation and continued strengthening of the real-time gross settlement system, the RTGS, and the establishment of regional payment systems in both the East African community and uh, common market of uh, Eastern and, and Southern Africa Comesa regional blocks. There's a little um, page that actually summarizes that and I'm sure it's a little handout, it's useful for all of you um, and you can take it on your way out. Undoubtedly, we have achieved a lot but much more remains to be done. Whereas the COVID-19 pandemic on, one, on the one hand accelerated the pace of digitization, on the other, it has a scarring effect on lives and livelihoods globally. Nevertheless, broad access to secure and efficient payment systems will be imperative as we steer back to the path of shared prosperity for our citizens. Further, Technological changes and innovations continue to gather pace. This has led to the emergence of new and prospective payments methods, including digital currencies such as electronic money, cryptocurrency, stable coins, and central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. While each of these innovations offers prospective benefits, the inherent risks need to be assessed carefully. It is against this backdrop that we are launching the National Payments uh, Strategy, 
It seeks to consolidate the gains we have made so far while illuminating the path towards a new chapter in Kenya's payment journey. Accordingly, the strategy seeks to realize the vision of a secure, fast, efficient, and collaborative payment system that supports financial inclusion and innovations that benefit Kenyans. And I was delighted to hear again Michael's presentation and Tamara's presentation, in effect, just underscoring uh, this point. Um, so thank you very much. I also noticed that it was picked up by the speakers, um, Mr. Carstens, um, also Alfred, and indeed um, the governor of the Bank of the Congo. This vision will be anchored on five core principles, trust, security, usefulness, choice, and innovation. The strategy has been developed through a consultative process with three overarching themes. First, people centricity. While technology and innovations remain formidable allies, it's easy to fall for their allure. The test of any, sorry, the test for any technology or innovation as we push forward our payments frontiers will be what need, the, what need they meet. Mobile money has so far aptly demonstrated what people centricity means. In Kenya and across many other developing frontier and emerging market economies, the need to transform money from rural to urban areas sowed the seeds of success of mobile money. A second theme is maximizing opportunities while minimizing risks. Technology and innovations present us with opportunities to address the frictions in payment systems. These include cost, convenience, ease of use, and more broadly, the customer experience. The next generation payment systems that we are aspiring to come with a promise of instant, cheaper, more convenient and user-friendly services. But risks lurk in the neighborhood, including cybersecurity, data privacy, and fraud. To calibrate the balance between risks and opportunities, we shall be guided by the principles in this strategy. This will ensure that citizens can trust that their payments will be made on a timely and reliable basis, securely, affordably, and conveniently. In effect, this will foster good order in our payment systems. A third theme is collaboration. We cannot do it alone. Payment systems will require to be even more interconnected, not just nationally, but regionally and globally. The cost of cross-border transfers remain high, and in the case of remittances, way beyond the sustainable development goal, um, goal target of uh, 3% by 2030. These are encouraging, sorry, there are encouraging experiments going on globally through collaboration among various central banks. These initiatives are showing early promise in significantly reducing the cost of cross-border transfers through, for instance, the use of uh, CBDCs. The strategy provides us the basic elements to chart a safe course in the face of future innovations and indeed also outrageous fit. I like the analogy that Alfred mentioned, um, playing before you play soccer, you better know where the goalposts are. I think there are some teams that uh, would have learned from that in the recently concluded uh, uh, cup, but uh, we digress. But in the words of a proverb, if you want to go far, go together. It is therefore important that we learn from each other so that our countries are not left behind in the next generation of payment systems. In that sense, the strategy is ours also, as, and also to others, 
uh, it belongs also to every other country. This is why I'm particularly delighted with the participation of BIS, AFI, and uh, the Association, African Association of Central Bankers in the launch today. But the, lit the litmus test is implementation. We look forward to working with you and other partners as we implement the strategy in an increasingly interconnected world. As I close, let me thank my colleagues at the Central Bank of Kenya and all those that contributed in the consultative process. It's interesting in the document, there are three pages of names of some of those that participated um, in this whole process. So, Buon appears there was a lot of consultation in this one. The, without their effort, would not be here today. And let me take this moment to celebrate the completion of the strategy as we gear up to its implementation. It's now my pleasure and honor to invite our chief guest, Dr. Julius Muya, the Principal Secretary to the National Treasury to make his remarks. Karibu sana buona pies. Uh, thank you, P.S. Um, I'm still learning a few things. <laughs> and thank you. I made a mistake. I should have recognized our chairman uh, the, of the Central Bank of Kenya. Um, so I, I hope I still have a job at the end of this. No, I don't have a job. <laughs> I think I can do something with mobile money, you know. So maybe that's my next job. But also I want to recognize other members of uh, our board, CBK board, that they are all here. Um, these two tables, there are several of them. And I also want to recognize members of uh, Monetary Policy Committee um, that are also here. Now we are into this, I definitely need to recognize some of the regulators and, uh, and other partners. I want to begin by um, recognizing Tamara, you spoke, but uh, uh, chairperson, the CEO of uh, FSD Kenya. I want to recognize the, the CEO, the new CEO of uh, the um, CA. I keep, I have to remember what does CA mean, you know? <laughs> Communication authority, we, we everybody uh, I think recognizes you. Of course, I w uh, what's that? Ah, yeah, of course, of course. Data is extremely important, and uh, I'm not sure where she is. There we are, there we are. So, again, another fellow regulator um, in a very interesting space. A lot of collaboration between the three of us. Um, but I also want to recognize other uh, regulators. Um, SASRA, for instance, I don't know where they are, but they were here somewhere, um, regulating uh, other, the insurance, um, the RB, RBA as well, all this and also CMA, they are here. So I think it shows you the collaboration. Actually, we also have KDIC, Mohamud is here. Um, so we have a lot of collaboration and I think uh, Buona C PS, this is what Tamara was mentioning, the collaboration that uh, has, uh, was embedded in this. So, and again, thank you for reminding me. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Governor, uh, for the opportunity. I want first to, to say thank you as um, I make my formal speech. Um, recognize the chairman of the uh, board of um, uh, directors uh, of uh, Central Bank, uh, Governor Dr. Patrick Njoroge, Governor Central Bank of Kenya, uh, Deputy Governor Sheila, where are you? Yeah, uh, Sheila Mbijiwe. Uh, Tamara, uh, thank you for a good speech. 
uh, Tamara Cook, the CEO of FSD Kenya. And uh, there are other dignitaries who have spoken ahead of me, uh, governors of uh, various central banks who are listening in, and um, deputy governors, other dignitaries, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I want first, before I make my speech, to say I sincerely uh, appreciate what we are doing today, and I am very associated uh, with this process. And, and partly, uh, not just because of my job, but my history in this space. Um, as a finance person, uh, way back uh, through university, uh, in my auditing career uh, in the private sector, also as a former banker, and also having been one of um, the key people in uh, crafting the national uh, Vision 2030 strategy, where payments is an important uh, part of it. And so I feel I am really part and parcel of what we are doing today. So may I congratulate us uh, for having gotten this uh, far in terms of um, this national payment strategy uh, that uh, we are launching today. And so thank you actually for inviting me uh, on this uh, occasion uh, where uh, we are launching the Kenya National Payment Strategy 2022-2025 to congratulate the central bank uh, leadership for spearheading the development of this national payment strategy. Can we clap for the national bank, uh, central bank, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me also, at the same time, thank uh, all those who have been involved in development of the strategy uh, for their very invaluable con contributions. Um, Governor Central Bank has indicated how this has been very participative, consultative. Again, let us appreciate them with a loud of applause. And so, uh, going back to the mid-1990s, um, those of us who were involved somehow in our payments uh, system, either you were a regulator or you were a part of the intelligentsia dealing with the payment system, or you were an operator somewhere, you know, we actually had systems where, which I can describe as just manual. Can you imagine? Systems that were manual. And so, it, because then the systems were manual, so the payments that we were making, the clearing processes, and the settlement processes during that time used to take several days. And, and you know, sometimes I sit back and I compare with those initial days, and for me in the early 80s, and I say, well, how were we operating that time? But we have come that far and now we are talking about um, a payment system that does not enable us to keep on wondering uh, what is happening a system that allows us to get things done quickly on the spot and so specifically if i can reflect back the whole sale payment system that time which included the interbank payments the clearing system and the settlement processes was so manual and paper-based. And this was because, you know, we used to hear about the clearing house that time. It was so manual. And so, when you reflect now on the retail payment systems that we have, you ask yourself, so those slow processes that we had that time, which were manual, that time we didn't know about mobile financial services, but now we are big on the mobile financial services uh, that we have. And so, things that we are doing now, people who were not involved that time in the 1990s and 80s may not appreciate where we have come from. So, can we clap for ourselves for having transformed and moving and having moved this far that, that we are now. So, it is for this reason that I say that the launch that we are having of the National Payment Strategy 2022-2025, it, it gives us really a good opportunity to recall and just think back on the impact of the good government payment system 
in terms of the reforms that we have had and also the modernization policy that we have been following consistently which has been taking root and we have been very faithful uh, to that uh, process where through that process there has been a review of the central banking act cap 491 uh, later which happened in 2003 to include a new section uh, where the object of central bank were uh, properly spelled that was uh, section 4a1d and so as i look back and reflect on the many achievements i want to say that um, the wise leadership of central bank has taken us very far in terms of getting us to where we are let me just comment on some of the achievements that uh, i can list among many one of them was the formulation of the national payments framework and strategy for the period 2004 to 2008. then number two was the implementation of the first ever rtgs the real-time growth settlement system for kenya i remember that time uh, we used to wonder how it would work and um, for me when it was implemented it was great and i want to say that was a big big step in terms of the achievements in this space so number three was the introduction of the mobile financial services mfs which was a unique product that existed nowhere in the world and so we did not have any example to copy we did not have any example to emulate it was learning as we were running. I hope I got the L and the R right. <laughs> and so <laughs> I want to go to the fourth item. Um, and this one is very key because it centralizes and crystallizes the reforms that we are doing. And this is the institutionalization of the national payment system through our legal framework. So, in this case, there was the enactment of the National Payment Systems Act 2011. And then, to actualize and implement that act was the subsequent National Payments Regulations of 2014, which enabled us to be able to operationalize that law. And so, distinguished guests, uh, let me take cognizance that the achievements that uh, have itemized above would not have been possible without the cooperation with Central Bank by the many industry players, uh, stakeholders, uh, most of whom are represented here today. So I want to thank um, all the stakeholders who have participated this far. Can we appreciate ourselves with a loud applause? Uh, thank you. I wish also at the same time to uh, commend the central bank leadership and the stakeholders in our payments industry for the good work that uh, you are doing and I'm therefore very proud uh, to say that today one can make payments conveniently and effectively anytime anywhere within and without Kenya can we clap for ourselves for that I thank you. So I am glad, therefore, that um, the vision and the principles uh, of this national payment strategy 2022-2025 are in conformity. They are in alignment with the wider government digital transformation agenda, uh, which is outlined, and uh, Tamara Cook did mention it, uh, in the Kenya Digital Economy Blueprint. In particular, the Digital Economy Blueprint does recognize that businesses have been improving their productivity uh, supported by both the adoption and adoption of new technologies uh, through e-government and also uh, financial services. I also observe that uh, this strategy does recognize that digital financial services have accelerated financial inclusion in the country and is also helping to improve uh, e-commerce output 
and safety while enhancing the country's competitiveness both within the country and also globally. I therefore have no doubt that uh, full implementation of this strategy will not only improve on our infrastructure but also enhance services delivery to Kenyans. At this juncture, actually, I was very excited as I did a quick review uh, of the strategy and I saw there's a chapter devoted to implementation in terms of the approach, in terms of an implementation matrix. And, and I want to say, a lot of times when you look at strategies, you find they don't capture how then that strategy will be implemented. So I want to comment the process of developing this strategy, which has identified an implementation framework that we can use to measure and evaluate how well we are achieving the goals that have been set in the strategy. So, uh, congratulations uh, for that uh, bit. <laughs> so, distinguished guests, uh, let me just reflect on the broader development strategy for Kenya. Um, for us, we have our national development framework, the Vision 2030, uh, where one of the pillars uh, in the Vision 2030 is to ensure that we achieve macroeconomic stability, uh, continuity in terms of governance reforms, also achieving enhanced equity and wealth, uh, creation opportunities for the poor, also in terms of infrastructure, uh, where we're looking at energy, science, technology, innovation, and um, many other reforms that uh, we address ourselves in uh, Vision 2030. And therefore, I want to pronounce myself that the digital economy uh, blueprint, uh, which was designed to enable Kenyans to see significant socioeconomic importance and opportunities arising from elimination of Vision 2030, is one of the things that it gives me joy as we talk about the digital technologies that we are going to imply to help unnest the opportunities that we have. So in this regard, I am very clear as we are implementing the National Payment Strategy 2022-2025, uh, this will go a long way to help uh, Kenyans reap the benefits which were identified, which were expected, and which are associated with digital finance as envisaged in our Vision 2030 uh, long-term development framework. Looking at some not very interesting part of history, but let me say it's a fact of life, the COVID pandemic. And so when this pandemic struck, and as we have been going through it, specifically in Kenya from March 2020, what we have witnessed, of course, is the need for social distancing. And this has specifically put a very clear spotlight on digital financial services. IMF in their reports has observed that digital financial services are enabling and allowing people and businesses to be able to achieve and practice proper social distancing. They allow governments to disburse funds to those in need quickly and effectively, allow many households and businesses to rapidly access online payments and financing, and indeed, uh, reflecting on the COVID-19 measures that Central Bank did institute uh, during the pandemic, it is clear that a resilient payment system can go a long way to help governments mitigate the effects of pandemics. And in this era of um, global climate change, one never knows what other pandemic uh, might come around. Of course, we are not wishing for them but you can't wish them away. Thus, the implementation of this uh, payment strategy, in my mind, uh, will greatly enhance the robustness and the effectiveness of our payments ecosystem. And I believe, as we are crafting our medium-term plan four, and I've been working very closely uh, with FSD, Tamara Cook, on that, and thank you, thank you, Tamara, uh, for your support in this. We will be looking to pick the great ideas that are in this strategy to make sure that they are ingrained, they are incorporated in the medium term for strategy that we are doing for the country, for the financial services sector. So let me conclude 
because um, I need to wind up my comments by saying that looking at the strategy listening to the presentation that have been made so far it is very clear that the leadership the uh, technical officers in the central bank of kenya have worked tirelessly to produce this strategy i want to thank you and clap for you uh, for that yeah <laughs> i also want and wish to thank the entire payments uh, fraternity for the cooperation you have accorded the central bank uh, during the formulation of this strategy and further urge you and all of us to ensure that this cooperation is continued in the future with these very many remarks i want to say thank you thank you so much for inviting me to come and witness the launch of this event so back to you is it wallace now uh, thank you wallace Uh, we need to move the podium so Watuangwa Media, if you can grab your microphones. So, uh, while they remove the podium, I'd like to invite uh, the following people to please join me up on stage. Uh, you shall be guided uh, by Fahari. Hoping for Harry, someone near the stairs. I'll ask uh, the Honorable P.S., uh, led by the Governor. Uh, you're going through those stairs. I'll also ask the Chair. Yes. Fahari, if you could please come and guide. The Chair as well. Uh, Mr. Chiloba, uh, the CEO of the Communications Authority. Ms. Kasait, uh, the Data Commissioner. Michael Aganza, who's sort of our host for the day, uh, we thank him. Uh, Dr. Habi Lolaka from the Kenya Bankers Association. And Tamara Cook, you thought you could escape this one? Of course you can't. Please join us on stage. Uh, Fahari, if you could just uh, help to arrange it. And don't forget that we shall need a bit of space there, so let me step down. So we want to, uh, let me move here so I get out of everyone's way. So as is usual with uh, these things, we shall also be joined momentarily by the Deputy Governor. So we'll uh, arrange it just waiting for a second for the Deputy Governor. Prepare your cameras. So the only thing I'll ask is that uh, Dr. Olaka, move slightly aside. If you just come slightly to the left, uh, Tamara, Dr. Olaka and DG, because that curtain is going to open in momentarily. So I want you all to join me, all of us that is, even as much as you have your cameras and phones in your hands, in counting down from five. I'll also ask the people who have joined us on stage uh, to please take off your masks momentarily. We'll try and keep healthy. Don't worry. So all of us, we're ready? I, I can't hear you. Thank you very much. 
I want us to count down from five. So five, three, two, one. Something's up. Oh, there we are. And a big round of applause. So that document uh, that is seeing mocked up there is a national payment strategy. We shall be receiving each a copy of uh, the document. Uh, I wonder, Governor, if you want to just momentarily say something. Oh, say something. <laughs> so congratulations to all of you, really. Um, particularly those that have been involved in this. This is a very important moment for all of us. And actually not just all of us in Kenya, as I said, it's all of us in Africa, all of us in the world. Um, I, I was quite touched by the comments that were made by some of the speakers. So I think this is a moment that will be remembered, um, not just in Kenya, but around the world. So congratulations, all of you. Thank you. Uh, we just want to very quickly take uh, just a couple of photos. The first one, Governor, and uh, you'll guide us in this. If we could just have uh, the PS, just on one side of... Right? And the Governor as well. Uh, and I'll ask... Uh, included to please remain on stage because we we're taking a series of photos. So my dear photographers, the moment is yours. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, yes, you, you, could, you could display with your hands. Yes, the, yes, sir, P.S. Of course. That's for the front page of some papers I know. <laughs> Thank you, P.S. Now, I'll ask, uh, do we just uh, array ourselves just as we were, uh, obviously with slightly reduced space? Yes. So, Mr. Chiloba, if you could just come slightly inward. Tamara, if you could, uh, Digi? If we could come right next to the PS, please. Yes. Sorry, it's a bit of a limited space. There you go. Mike, if you can just come in slightly inside. There you go. I think that does the job. Yes. A round of applause, please. And as PS says, pretend you're reading the book. So, Asanteni Sana, you may please get off the stage. Thank you very much. So, this brings us neatly to the end of our program uh, for this morning. Oh, the PSPs, yes, there's a whole... We want to try and get this down, if we can. Yes. So, you may please step down. We get better photos. But as I was saying, the more formal part of our program, meaning the speeches and the launch itself, which you've all witnessed this morning, we thank you very much for joining us. Now we want to start asking the different groups to please come forward. Uh, we shall start with the PSPs. Governor, I think we will tie you out today because you will be the host of this photograph. So PSPs, I know you're seated all around the room. Yes. If you could please come forward. I don't call you in one by one. Otherwise, I'll have to call people uh, for quite a while. The payment service providers, if you could please come in. We'll try and array you in such a way that we're able to get the photograph. We may want to do two lines. I think it's a very, very wide photograph. But I don't want to take the risk of saying people of my height to go up. So, uh, without saying it, if you are closer to me than the, to the governor, please go up. That is in height, that is. Uh, please go up the stairs to come up on the stage. Just so the photo is a bit more compact. It's a bit too wide at present. So, maybe from here, please go up. Uh, Mogo, yeah, up, if you do not mind. This is not in any order of priority. It's just to make a neater photo. So, photographers, I cannot see your camera, so you tell me whether the photo is adequate. Is it okay? So,
So if you could all, uh, if you have any mask on your face, please take it off and then smile if you do not mind. Say national payments. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. So that brings us now to the end of the entire program, both the formal and the photography bit of it. You're free to leave, but there's still lots of breakfast. So if you are inclined that way, you can stay on. You will be getting, so please make sure you get it in your hand as you leave, a copy of the strategy itself uh, and the other documents that are referred to. If you're still online with us, we will also be posting all these documents on our website. So at some point within this morning, the strategy will be there, the slides that were used in uh, Mr. Ganza's presentation, the videos that we shot, or rather we displayed today, all of them will be available for you to see, download, interact with online. But for now, thank you so very much for joining us this morning. We thank you and do have yourselves a good day ahead. Kwa majina naitwa Susan Okol na nafanya kazi ya samaki. Hii kazi nimefanya kwa muda mrefu. Sasa hivi niko na 15 years kwa hii samaki. Naenda kikomba very early in the morning. 4:30 nishamka kwa nyumba. 5 nishapanda gari. Kitu kama saa 12 niko kikomba na chagua samaki. Cuz ni ile original. Kichelewa, huwezi pata. Sasa naenda subuhi kabisa by 6, 6.30, shaisha. Nikisha chukua tunapima, alafu tunalipa na simu. We don't pay cash. Sai, hii biashara ya samaki, ni mzuri na kutumia simu. Nimefurahia sana simu. Juu nikiuza na save. Inanisaidia tu kusave. Sasa hii tu nikiuza tu hivi naweka kwa nini? Kwa kwa savings. At the end of the day ama at the end of the week kunapata ume save mingi sana kwa simu. 0710 75 Brand move ya. Eh. Asante. Ni na save pale nimeka. Na save hata nikitembea, na save hata nikilala. Nikiamuka hivi, natoa hivi, natoa so pesa, natumia kikomba. Hata kama sijafika kikomba pesa yangu imefika hapo. Mi nikienda napata tu samaki yangu. Pesa inaenda mbele kuniliko just because of simu. School fees pia ni simu. Juu sahi account account ya shule kama mimi watoto wangu walikuwa nasoma ushago. Tunaweka kwa account direct. Atuno endi na fi yangu ime, imefi. Kada watoto wako wanafukuzwa na tunatulipa tu na school fees na simu.
My name is uh, Caroline Gina. I'm an entrepreneur. I run a cleaning company called Miss Clean, where we specialize in professional cleaning services, both domestic and commercial. We've been in business for the last 13 years. As a business, we run a lot of transactions that are money related. When we started, I remember mostly the biggest mode of payment was checks, especially for corporates and individuals that could pay us via cash. Looking at the involvement of money handling and transactions has, has changed. And mostly even when COVID happened. I remember there was a big shift uh, from um, uh, cash handling to you know now more of uh, online uh, transactions. And most of my clients ask for bank details and they currently do transfers, especially the corporates, they do just bank transfers. That walking and walking out of a bank was like something we had to keep doing. But these days we don't have such things. It's just at a touch of a button either on your phone, or on your laptop, and things are just happening. So that has even helped us as business people, such that we don't have to wait for money. I remember I used to go to the bank to ask them to give me an uncleared effect so that I can do my next job, especially when business was really st still struggling with the cash flow. But now instantly you have your client pays and instantly you have the money. We do internet banking from our main account to uh, mobile banking. When it's transferred to the mobile banking uh, system, then it's transferred now to every employee. That has created a lot of um, uh, efficiency because the person paying doesn't have to go to the site where our staff are working from. It just had a touch of button or while they're just seated in the office. They can easily pay people, pay them timely. By the time the work is ending, everyone has their money and they can access it and go home. A big part of our transaction, especially receiving payments, I involve uh, a lot of um, uh, domestic, the domestic part uh, where clients, we serve them on a daily basis and they have to pay us on a daily basis, not waiting at the end of the month, it's like the corporate clients. So most of them use mobile banking. We actually cancelled um, cash payments years ago. We no longer receive cash as a company. We only operate on, with uh, mobile banking. Internationally, we also procure mostly our machineries because it's easier, of course, and cheaper to get them there. Once we've settled with a supplier, we go to our bank and we give them the supplier's details. Sometimes the bank also helps us also get to know um, the credibility of the supplier and all such details. And then they help us do now the bank transfer, which is all again instant. And once it's done, we have uh, the transaction uh, evidence, which we send to our supplier, and our supplier is uh, able to just send the materials and machinery to us within our time. So yes, that has uh, helped us a lot. We don't have to go through so much changing money here, taking the money, or picking the money in cash, or carrying the money in cash, which uh, evidently would lead to enough times, you know, loss of, of, of cash. The Central Bank of Kenya is launching the National Payment Strategy to provide the vision and roadmap for taking Kenya's payments industry to the next level. The strategy will cover the next four years starting 2022 to 2025. This strategy will be implemented by the Central Bank of Kenya with the participation of both local, regional and international players in the payments ecosystem. The strategy is a culmination of strong partnerships and vibrant collaboration between the Central Bank of Kenya and its partners in government, payments industry, private sector, fintechs, international organizations, and many others. 